I just want to get some white into this darker colour because I don't want it to be over the top dark. Just a bit of white into it, maybe a tiniest amount of blue as well. I want it to be an, not too blue, just enough. See that in there? It's still got a load of more crimson than blue. And then you use the white with that. So yeah, I'll get the shade. I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to be quite light. Something like so, because that's a good contrast against this light sky that we've got. So just in here, I'm going to start, and we've got a very thin cloud that's working its way all the way along the horizon. So give it little bobbles on top and stuff, little tiny round things on top of it, but keep it coming through pretty straight all that way. And it comes all the way and goes off behind some mountains that we're going to be doing and then I'm going to fatten that up slightly just by adding more colour in there all the way along all to about there so it's a nice little stringy cloud along the horizon and then I think I might just put from this edge here and we'll have a bit of that come in straight through as a little cloud underneath there that's quite a distance away. Maybe one there. I know that we've definitely got some up in here. So I'm just going to roll them through it from this edge just gently in there. All I'm doing is applying the colour first with this and then I'm going to use some of the orange, the brush with the orange on it again, back into the, the bright one, the red and then just up on this area under here I just want to touch a bit of that into this yellow area and they'll look like clouds, you can actually put a bit up into that cloud as well. Just along the horizon there, so you've got a mixture of the orange with the others. And the same up in here, you can just come along and just touch the smallest amount of orange to that all the way along. That's it. And then again, you can get a clean brush and go over this on the horizon and pull it. I want it to look like it's a stretched cloud. St allow it to stretch right. See that? Same with that. On this one, actually pull the colour on the canvas to make it look soft and distant. So this one's a bit closer. So with this one, you do it slightly different. Slightly different. I'm just going to gently come over that. And just allow it to softly blend together and you'll still see that orange that you put in there then but it'll be diffused. That's that, that's cool. Right, we're on to his mountains. So the same colour that we've used in here. Same good old dark colour that we've been using all the way through. And just on just Underneath where this cloud is basically, we've got some lovely mountains. I'm going to start them from this edge. And I'm going to actually bring them down. Slightly. Up. I want to have some proper, lovely effects with this. Just concentrating on the top edge at the moment. I don't care less what's happening anywhere else. I want it darker at this side as well than I do near the light source. Near the light source, so I'm going to make it slightly lighter. I might actually put a bit more blue in with this colour. I'm going to put a bit more of the ultramarine blue into it. For these mountains, just a bit more. All the way up into there. And it'll mix them with the colour. 
because you've got it is a lavender basically. I just have a bit too much crimson in with it. And it's quite sharp because it's a sunset scene. It is really quite sharp. And you've got to get that balance right between the mauve and the lavender because there's a bit of both in there. So that's why I'm doing that and using the two side by side. You can go backwards and forwards between the two different shades. Pull down at the angles that you want. I don't want no detail really in these. They're just pretty much in the background in silhouette. So as we come through his side now here, it goes quite a bit further on. And then there's a bigger drop, quite a bigger drop. And it sort of like recovers itself and comes back up again. Now this is where the mountain disappears off to this area. So I'm going to start there and allow it to come up. And this one's got a little bobble on top. It's probably the biggest of the mountains, but it's the lightest because it's close to the sun. Pull down underneath it some colour. And then use the angles. And brush down at those angles. Pull it in. It will mix with the liquid white. That's a great thing though. Because it allows you to use them angles to get lovely effects. If you push things in front of other things and push things back into the distance by using this. Right, that's great because just underneath that is where I've got some little stand of trees. So before I go any further, I know that I've still got a brush with the orange on and the yellow. So I'm going to get the brush with the yellow first of all. I'm just touching into that yellow. You shouldn't, you should always keep them there and you can keep reusing them. And then with this here, I'm just going to put some of the yellow reflected into this lake where this Scottish castle is. Just some of the yellow in there. And just in this part I want to mix it with the little white a bit more. So you just keep mixing it and it will actually mix with it. There, and then use the orange. Maybe just a tinge of the orange over in there. And then straight through to the crimson. So we've got the crimson colour standing in there. And that's a lovely. It's all the colours we've used in the sky basically are showing through in this area. So I want you to get some of that crimson as well and pull it down into here. Just some of that crimson down in there. Don't have to do it too strong, allow it to mix with the liquid white. Same over in here where this yellow is. Just come in, use some of it, and then come in there and allow some of that colour in. Just in there. I only wanted a bit of that yellow to show through really, you see. That's it. Now and again in areas when you put in the next colour on, which is this darker colour in the water, you'll find that you can just leave some areas of the crimson showing through and standing out. I don't mind, I'm going to have this blue colour in here anyway, as well to get a stronger crimson tone in, first of all. in there. There we go. Well 
allow that to blend nicely. Lovely warm colours. There. Right. Now I want to use some of this colour again with the ultramarine blue and the crimson mixed together. And then with that, I might even get some white, some titanium white. I'll show you the colour that I'm after. Something about like so. And you can always pick up a bit more of that colour. And just tweak it if you want. If you want to put a bit more blue in or a bit more crimson. I want it slightly to the blue side of this. So I'm going to come in. Now just along the water's edge. It's going to be about there. So we're going to have a little bit of this blue just in there. And in there. So you can pull it from there and you can actually just drag it in gently. It's still got crimson in it so it shouldn't turn green. As long as you put crimson with it still it'll be fine. And then just in here we've got an eddy where the wind has actually blown the water and shown some of the light just in there. So I've lost that in now. And the idea is to actually pull this colour in and then you can leave areas, like for instance, I'll leave a strip just underneath that and I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. I'll put the colour around it, first of all, even in there do the same thing and then when you run out of colour, you can gently come back and blend over that and it shows that colour underneath basically. It'll stay there, it'll remain in there. Don't kill that colour underneath. It's very easy to kill it. Follow that through where it comes through there. To here. The other side of the castle. There's a few wobbles in there so we'll leave some of the crimson again showing. And then down in here I'm going to more or less cover right up. Much more solid colour down in here now. Only allowing it to show through now and again. Uh, and when we get into the bottom area, you can more or less use a really dark colour like so on the bottom edge. Just like it's darker at the top, it wants to be lighter down below. Darker down below, sorry. And we're getting there. Really enjoy doing paintings like this. Such a big one as well, it's a huge one, isn't it? Huge canvas. Going back up into my clouds a little bit here and there. Don't think that just because you've got something done, you don't think that you can't go back in again. Because if you see something you're not that keen on, just go back in there, don't worry about it. You can soften things off if you think something's a bit too dark. You can brighten things up if you think it's not light enough. Right, now I'm getting there. Now I can just blend underneath this softly and allow a few ripples and stuff to go in just under there and that colour we used underneath it and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to actually put these trees in now some trees right so just underneath here I'm going to use that same dark colour that we used for the mountains only it's darker because we're going to put some black to it and then with that you can tap in Got a lot of paint on the brush 
a lot of paint on the bristles here. So it starts off over at this side, and it's quite low, actually. It's quite low. Just in there. I'm only worried about that top edge at the moment. But it needs to be predominantly darker than the mountain so that it stands out and you have separation. So these trees are pretty much getting bigger and bigger as they go over to the right, these trees. So what I'll do is I'll just start off over here and I know they're going to be getting bigger and bigger so I can always have that in my mind. Remember that contrast between them mountains and this is air, this area is quite important. Even like little trees on the top. There. Don't be scared of using lots of colour for this. Right, and then just underneath that, what I do is I will make it a bit bigger at that end because I want it to be bigger on the right hand side smaller over here on the left so I'm just going to actually come along the bottom now and I'm going to give us a, a water line and then what you can do is you can actually tap up above just like so so this water line now I'm just going to run the brush right through and then it gets smaller at this end Over here, it's a lot smaller and thinner. Tap underneath that, so it's all got the same texture then. That's it, that's good. Now I'm back to a brush which is more or less, it's relatively clean. Basically, it's, it's pretty much clean. I'm just going to go up and touch underneath this now, because I want it to be soft underneath it. I'm going to do it all the way along. See that nice and soft in there. And same over in here, but I might pick a bit more colour up. Yeah, intentionally done that, pick some more colour up. Good. Come back and tap for them trees again, just in there. Sometimes have to go into plan. I'm going to use a fan brush and I'm going to get some titanium white. Both sides of the brush. And then just along the water line, just along here, I'm just going to touch an indication of a water line just in there. Just with a fan brush. And the same, bring it over this side and through to about there. I just want it to stand out. Something about like that, that's cool. Now I've actually got underneath that, just over in here, got a bit of a dark reflection. I'll put that reflection in just in there. Quite dark. And then I pull down, pull down, 
None of these have been reflected because they're quite small. Whereas these are quite big. So you just pull down like so. And then what I do is I get a clean brush. And just would go. Maybe pull down again one last time. And then go across. Make it look soft, just like proper reflections in there. Back to my white. And I can just come back up in here. Just add a few little bits of something going on. It's a bit closer just over here. But it's getting bigger. There. Right, now we've got some little peninsulas coming out into the wall. I'm just so. using this dark colour, both sides of fan brush, sharp to a chiselled edge, extremely sharp, and then just over in here, we're talking about just under it there. Yeah, we have a piece of land, like a, a rocky peninsula that's coming out. And it's quite thin actually, it's quite slim. There. Something like that is what I'm after. And it's got some like rocks on top of it. And it actually is quite flat at the moment. This one. So I'll just paint behind it a tiny bit. And there's going to be another peninsula coming from that. So just around here. We're going to actually come down and we're going to come through. So we've got one in there in front of it as well. But this one's quite thin also. We actually come down a bit just there and then let it go off really, really thin. Just like that. That's perfect. bring it in. Now when I'm bringing this in, I'm going to come down slightly, paint behind that, that's just good and dark in there. Just block that in with colour. There's another little peninsula that comes out, just into the water there. And then come back around again, just in front of it, quite a solid one is this, and then that just goes out into the water as well, tails off. Now I actually want to bring this back quite straight, this one. So, what is it? There's water line now there. Bring it back there. It's good. That can come right back now. Lock that in behind it. We can put some little indications of stuff going on on there a little later. For now, just getting the colour in basically. There. Always good to just step back and have a good look at what you've been doing. would like this to tail off a little bit more than it does. A little one in there and then it's going to get smaller as it gets to the end. It does go quite fine. That's good. We've also got a really long peninsula 
in front of this, which actually comes right out over to here. Just starts at the side of the trestle, finishes at the side of the trestle, just in there. all the way back and we've got a few little lumps and bumps in it it's got an area just there a little one at the front and then we've got a bigger one as we come along here about there I'm just painting behind that and then it's quite thin really all the way just slightly gets bigger as it goes towards the left <laughs> 